Hey guys, it's Sid here with svtperformance.com and we're here with uh, my buddy Rich. We're working on his Focus ST. We've got a few mods we're going to put on it today out here at my buddy Arthur's shop. We're going to get it up on the lift here in a second. We've got fantastic looking MBRP exhaust fresh off the truck from Canada. We've got a catted downpipe and a new intercooler going in. Rich has already went ahead and put in uh, one step colder plugs. Already have the headlights out. Now we're going to get it up in the air a little bit just to make uh, working on this front end a little bit easier. That way we're not rolling around on the ground. I like the label on it. Yeah. Cuss because you're probably gonna cuss at getting this thing out of here. Yes. It decreases my rotational torque by a bit. I will... oh. I was saying at first I didn't think the stock piece Looked like it was too bad until you see this massive crimp down right off the turbo going into the cat. That's a horsepower robbing piece if I've ever seen one. I mean, that's that's really bad. Whereas you got a nice smooth bend with this aftermarket one. What brand is this? This is an Acelatec. Acelatec. Uh, from, uh, I want to see where I bought it from. Yeah. CJ Putting Parts, and it's technically a MagnaFlow 200 count high flow catalytic motor. So Magnaflow Cat, Celicat, a Celitec from CJ Pony Parts, and yeah, that's that's gonna be way better right there. Not to mention larger diameter pipes to match the rest of the yeah, MBRP. Two and, inch, two and a half inch to three inch as well. Yeah, you're right. So that should help quite a bit. So one of the things MBRP does with uh, this catback system is they give you two different pipes to connect to your uh, downpipe. So this would go to the factory downpipe. As you see, it's got a little reduction in diameter there. We're using this one with the full three inch exhaust because we now have a three inch downpipe. Show me your instructions here. Well, I'm really glad it was typed in six font. And uh, it's very detailed. Um, I kind of like having pictures because I'm stupid. Yeah. So thankfully they included some pictures. And uh, this was printed. They're, they're uh, roughly the size of a postage stamp. Three, so. 320 by 240. So this is uh, back in 1989 webcam standards. Yeah, that's beautiful. Hey, at least it's not dot matrix. I'm glad it's black and white because it's just, uh, I like the challenge. So we're off the lift after we got the uh, exhaust and 
intercooler installed in Rich's 2018 Focus ST. We're going to go out and take a little test drive. Truth be told, it's been a couple days since we finished the uh, install, but it's rained a little bit. So, this is a, Rich has been getting to drive it around some, but this is my first time riding in the car since we got all this stuff installed. But uh, So, what do you think so far? Since it's your car, you should uh, be able to tell the difference is a little bit better. Well, I'm really happy with it. I mean, you know, we did... Um did some custom tuning uh, from afar uh, with a company called Edge Autosport. They're out in Colorado. Uh, great bunch of guys to deal with. Um, I, I didn't want, you know, this is sort of a, a daily driver, if you will. I, I work from home, um, but I do a lot of my traveling in, in this car. And I wanted something that was a little more peppy, um, you know, a little more fun to drive. Uh, obviously, a, a slight addition to a, an exhaust note, um, but I didn't want anything overly, uh, overly loud and uh, uncomfortable. You know, to, to be in it all the time. Um, did the research on a couple different forms, um, you know, and, and kind of got what I thought was going to be a good combination for exhaust. Um, was able to save some money on an intercooler. Um, all, truth be told, all the parts seem to work out really well. We've done some data logging, did a couple pulls with some 93 in the tank, and um, the car just makes a tremendous amount more torque now. Um, you know, we haven't hit the dyno yet. Definitely, the butt dyno is. Um, is definitely there but it's a lot more fun to drive um you know as of right now so let's take a ride all right give us an opportunity to get on a little bit Might have made 230 foot pounds of torque, so it lost um, you know, a significant amount of power. So, one thing I know you were really worried about though was. Yeah, 
the uh, coming days. I'm actually taking this car to a uh, Roebling Road uh, here in a couple days with some uh, friends of mine, and uh, I'm going to be able to, while I'm there, actually dial in a, uh, an E30 tune uh, while at the track, which I think is going to be kind of cool. So uh, the 93 is pretty much done, and it's, it's driving really, really well. But uh, an E30 on these cars picks up a few horsepower, nothing really to write home about. Most importantly, you're getting 30 or 40 uh, foot-pounds of torque, maybe not that much, maybe about 25 to 30 foot-pounds of torque with an E32 um, once it's all said and done. So but once I get that all done, I'm actually going to take it to a local dyno uh, in uh, near Pittsburgh where I'm from and um, throw it back on the exact same dyno, back on the rollers again, and just see what kind of improvements. Um, and I guess the next step is going to be a turbo. Yeah, yeah, we've um, talked to those guys and there's a lot of people seem to be happy with the Garrett. There's, there's a number of different flares of turbos that you can buy. I'm, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm kind of uh, just a self-read expert at this point where I've just I've done a lot of reading about a lot of different things. But um, you have to pick what, what you actually want the car to do, where you want your power band to be, and so forth. Um, but uh, there's a Garrett, I think it's a 2867R uh, Gen 2, uh, just right around two grand. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can accommodate the fueling needs for something like that. There's been a lot of guys that do what's called ox fuel. And that's, you know, you put a, an additional fuel rail in there with two standard injectors and you have a controller, uh, which seems like it functionally works uh, and squirts fuel right into the intake track. Um, I'm going a different route. There's a, a company called uh, XDI that makes a, uh, an aftermarket uh, fuel pump, a high pressure fuel pump for these. It's a little pricey, but, um, you know, some uh, some tuning changes uh, in the tune, and you can get I don't know 35 percent more pressure and and or volume. I I have to check on that. I think, but it's you get 30 percent more headroom on uh, on fuel. So you bolt that on there. You bolt the turbo on um, next to a clutch or an LSD to keep the thing going straight. Um, you know, you're looking at around mid 400s or something like that if you're really turning the wick up on uh, E30. Uh, all day long so yeah so basically it'll live past 5500 rpms then instead of falling on its face yeah you could pull this thing all the way to the moon uh really i mean the thing uh, i've seen the dyno sheets of some other similarly built cars and you, know, you can really 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 uh bring them out if you wanted to but i don't need to go crazy i mean if i hit a little north of 400 i'm going to be more than happy i don't plan on racing this thing or anything like that at all but you know if you want to get on it a little bit you still want to have that power there uh, well, let's give it one more rip and we'll call it a video. It is surprisingly fun, you know, for what it's doing. The hand stops good so you don't run over the dog. <laughs> Take care of the animals, people. Well, I think that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and, you know, all that stuff everybody says at the end of their YouTube videos. And head over to SVT Performance if you want to see the full article we did on uh, this little short build we did on Rich's uh, Focus ST. I'll put the link in the description below.